Good day! In today's lesson, you will learn the different functions of communication. So, what do you mean by functions of communication? So, when we say function of communication, it refers to how humans use languages for different purposes. So, it will tell us why are we communicating to other people? What are the purposes? So, we also have here Roman Jacobson, Michael Halliday, and Bronislaw Malinowski. So, they are theoreticians who have categorized the different functions of communication. So, the first function is regulation or control. The communication can be used to control the behavior of human beings. So, uh, it pertains to how humans should behave. So, it can be also used to regulate the nature and amount of activities humans engage in. So, example, doctor's prescriptions. So, sometimes when we are sick, our doctors prescribe us medicines and if we want, if we want to feel better, we have to follow the description given by the doctor. So, by doing that, it regulates our action, which is to follow the doctor's prescription. Next example is the parents' instruction to their children. So, for instance, you are in a party and your mother texted you to come home at exactly 9 o'clock. So, in this part, you are being controlled. Another example, when your friends giving advice on what course of action to take. Example, uh, scolding employers order for their employees. So, customers making orders and etc. So those are examples of regulation or control. So, here are some language forms that you can use for regulation or control. So, in regulating or controlling behavior, it can be done in three ways. So, so for, the first one is imperatives or commands. So, in other words, you are commanding or uh, requesting, like for example, Get a chair. Another example, do your assignment. Another example, we have, please shut your mouth. So that is imperatives or commands. Next, we have the rhetorical question. This kind of question would influence human behavior. So it can make the listener follow you or not. Example, do you have a pen? So, a person may either say, I don't have one, or automatically gets her pen. Here, after you ask that, usually a response is that uh, our body will automatically follow the one who asked that particular question. Next, we have the uh, declaratives. So, these are statements that when a person says something, he or she wants the listeners to do something. So it's like, do what you are told to do. For example, I want to be alone. Another example, you need to hurry. And we also have here, that's not the right thing to do. So that is the characteristics. Next is the social interaction. So communication can be used to produce social interaction. So sometimes when we speak or communicate to socialize with other people or to develop or maintain bonds, intimacy, relations, or even associations. So example of communication and social interaction include pick up lines. So sometimes when we say pick up lines to our friends to make a person laugh, especially when they are happy or uh, even when they are sad. Uh, thus developing a friend bond. Next, we have invitations. So sometimes we invite other person to know them well and establish relationship. Another example of social interactions are greetings, encouragement, marriage proposals, game plans, and etc. We also have here the language forms that we may use for social interactions. So for instance, we have Let's be friends. So if you want to establish friendship to another person, so we can say that expression. Another example, will you marry me? So we ask that if you wanted to spend the rest of our lives to those persons uh, we have chosen. We also have here, be my group partner. Another example, so we have, I like you, I love you, hello, and etc. 
Next is the motivation. So it refers to a person using language to express desire, needs, wants, likes, and dislikes, choices, and aspirations. So sometimes we communicate to motivate others or to motivate ourselves. Example, telling someone that he must not be tired of studying because after all the hard and lengthy planning, it would probably bear sweet fruits. So, another example, we have expressing one's ambition. So, sometimes uh, when we alter that, it motivates us uh, to work harder, to strive more in order to successfully achieve or reach our goals in life. So, we also have other examples like talking about preferences, ordering in a fast food restaurant, expressing a need, desires, or aspirations. Next, we have language forms for expressing motivation. So, for example, we have the phrase, I need. So, for example, I need to eat mango to finish my work because it will be the source of my energy. Another example, I want. So, when I want, for example, I want to buy a new laptop so it will be easier for me to type or research. We also have other expressions like, I dream of and I like. Next is the information. So communication can be used for giving and getting information. So sometimes we communicate to get or share information or knowledge. So giving information usually comes in the form of declarative or statement of facts and in terms of rhetorical constructs. So we have here the language forms for sharing or obtaining information. So for giving information, we have here using statements. Uh, by just giving statements, we can be able to give information that may help other persons. Like for example, Philippine Normal University was established in 1901. Another example, the capital of the Philippines is Manila. So by uh, by that statement, you will be able to uh, give an information about that. We can also give information using uh, questions like, Did you know that some earphones can be used as microphones? So by asking that, we are telling the audience that earphones can also be used as microphones. Another example, did you know that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass? So just by asking that, we, we are able to give the audience the definition of mass. And if we are trying to get information, it can be done through three ways. So using questions, using imperatives, or using declaratives. So as you can see here, we have different examples. So for using questions, we have, where is Mount Mayon? Did it rain last night? Is it windy outside? So we are able to get information just by asking those particular questions. Next, we can use imperatives such as, show me how to tie a knot. So by uh, telling that you are uh, able to get some information on how to tie a knot. Next, give me information regarding the weather. So by that imperative, you will get an information from your uh, listener or audience. And then we also have declaratives. So for example, I don't know where to find the city hall. So automatically your listener uh, when uh, they receive that kind of declarative or statement, automatically they will help you to find the city of all. So they will get information in order for you uh, to get in the city hall. Next, I need to understand how my bill was computed. So if you're going to tell that to your listener, of course, their action is to give you information about how to compute your bill. So something like that. So another function of communication is emotional expression. So communication is used to express emotions. 
So we communicate to express what and how we feel, like love, fear, anger, joy, and so on and so forth. So there are also language forms for expressing uh, emotions that we may use. So we have here the phrase, I think. So you can say, I think I am about to cry for the bad thing that happened to me today. So here you are expressing your sadness. Next, we have the phrase, in my opinion. So you can say that, in my opinion, you are someone who gives hope and gives positivity. So here you are expressing what you feel about that person. You may also use the phrases, I believe that, the way I see it, and so on. So that's the end of my discussion today. I hope you've learned something. Thank you.